Hello, everybody. Hope you're all well. Hope you're having an amazing week. I've actually managed to get around to transcribing a session. Can't believe it. And that's because um, I'm no longer having to work on the parents course every single night. I am now free. So I have picked a recent session to share with you today um, because one of the things that many people will say to me is, I really miss your vlogs that you used to do. I know you're into your entity release thing now, um, but I really miss tuning into that higher vibration um, that we used to access when you used to read vlogs of your sessions. So I've listened to that and I am bringing it back. So as well as doing uh, videos on entity release and talking about that side of light work, I am also going to, for my own soul and for other people's souls, bring back the high frequency vlogs uh, so that we can connect with all of it because all of it needs to be done. So I've picked this particular session today uh, because I found this one really, really interesting. Being somebody that practices past life regression, and I've done thousands of past life regressions now, you get to see so many clients that will have a certain type of lifetime. So those lifetimes will be, um, Dolores Cannon used to call them the potato picking lifetimes, where not too much happens in it. Um, but there will be something that occurs that is quite big. So you might get somebody who's a farmer um, who at a certain point in their life uh, is rode off their land. Or you might get a farmer um, that loses their partner and then has to run the farm and bring the children up at the same time. Um you might get a lifetime in the Victorian, in the Victorian um, era, that's either in a workhouse or um, you know you're a maid or you're a, you're somebody in the a scullery or a cook or conversely you'll get some of the lifetimes that have been in the aristocracy. So you'll get all those kinds of lifetimes, many, 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 many of them. But occasionally you'll get a client that comes in that connects with something quite special and something quite different. Um, so I wanted to share this one today because I thought this one was pretty awesome. And it really gets you thinking about frequency and vibration, which is, which is what I would like everybody to do. I would like everybody to, on a daily basis, basis be thinking about the energy and the frequency of all things including themselves so here we go so she begins it's it was a lady um who who did this session and it's important to note that this is session number two so the first session that i did with this client was a full entity release so it was entity release from every single chakra in the body, not only every single chakra in the body, but also soul star, earth star, hands and feet. Um, and we released a lot of entities from this individual. We completely cleaned and cleared her energetic body up. And because of that, her energy centers were plugged into the organic planet and um she was able to vibrate a lot higher. She reported to me in the second session, in this session, that the voices that she had been hearing before had disappeared, that she was feeling much, much better, much more confident, much more happy, um, and that there was a lot of space inside now for her soul to step forwards because all of those entities that were taking up that space before had been removed. So that's how we were able to connect to this really high frequency lifetime. So she begins, it's like a massive library full of scrolls and parchments. So I've taken her in past life regression to a place that she needs to see today. And this, this is where she goes. 
long tables with parchment paper everywhere, but it's all organized. It's a big room. There are rows that you can walk down with different parchment papers and it's bound together in books, except these books are tied together with what, what looks like leather shoelaces. And as you look at those parchments and consider them, tell me more about what you feel that those parchments contain. They are not in English. Some of them are just letters, communication. Some of them are about politics and governments. Some of them are about herbs and healing. There's another group that's about the occult, but not the way that we would stand, understand the word occult today. It's about frequency and maths. If you consider these scrolls in this place, look at the place with the parchments. Tell me more about the place. It's a place to study, a place to learn. Look down at yourself in this place. Tell me what you look like. I'm a skinny man with a beard. My hair's definitely got white in it. Does the body feel young or old? Forties, but it doesn't stay in one age. And then her attention is called back to what she's doing in this room astronomy or astrology she's trying to work it out there's something about math and the frequency of the numbers in the right order and how it can change the frequency of a room or a communication their numbers in this place are not like how our numbers are in this day it's not quite the same it's like a number here has a tone and a tone has a language. So the alphabet is based on the math frequency. So when you order the words, it's like numbers. If you order the spelling, we're going to carve a word into a pillar, a frequency. And then that word becomes the pillar. And then it changes the pillar in the room, holding up a ceiling. Without the word, without the math on that pillar, the pillar would just be a pillar. But the moment that you carve or etch the word, which is a math, which is a frequency, which is a tone into the pillar, it changes the entire dynamic of the room and vibration of the room. If it had many pillars and each one had a piece of math or frequency, then you can build a vibration in the room that will affect the people that come into the room. It will affect what is done in the room. And this this is something that I know. This is something that I've studied. It's like a chemistry in a way. You know the number. You know the room. You know the frequencies that need to be built. The frequencies that you want to solidify in that room. The language comes from the math. It comes from the tone. And when it's etched, into the stone of the pillars, the words are born and it governs how a person thinks in that room. It governs how they move. You can do a massive hall where everyone eats and you want it to be celebratory. You want people to be close and bonded when they come in there. So the pillars have to be etched and the words and the sounds not spoken then become spoken by the people. They echo the frequency of the chamber in their words and laughter. If you wanted a somber critical truth, not even a punishment truth, 
you can put the etching of that truth of the words onto the wall, the symbols onto the wall, and that truth would be felt in the frequency of the room. The words look like Egyptian, like a bird mixed with another animal. They are not decorations. The person that comes into that energy of the room where the symbol is or symbols are, is bound by that energy. Their words, their frequency become the same as that energy. It was my job to place the words and the frequencies on the walls and the pillars and the rooms so that they would walk in and that the energies that were wanted, required or requested would be felt by the guests in that room. I did not build the rooms. I was indentured. So that was the opening speech of this past life regression. And when you're normally used to going into the same kinds of lifetimes and when you've seen thousands of people, um, I know that these in, these experiences are very, very individual and beautiful and wonderful uh, for each individual person. And they have point and relevance and karmic relevance for that individual that you're seeing. But for you as the person that listens to all of these for a living, um, you you kind of know off the bat whether you've got a, a really good lifetime or whether it's going to be a bog standard lifetime. So this one is shaping up to be a good one. Tell me more about the spaces that you were called to create and to work in. A lot of my time was spent in that big room with the parchments. A lot was spent pacing the rooms once they were built and finding an echo. You know, when something bounces off of the walls, the words, the frequencies would bounce and they had to be in harmony. So a lot of it would be about feeling the room, feeling the essence and the vibration of the room and where the bounce was before I would even create anything. This would be before the symbols and the math was even etched. To begin with, I might mould the symbols out of clay and bring them into the room and then place them until you found the right trajectory, the right bounds, the right frequency to set up the whole room. Then whoever wanted this room would come in with the other people and they would feel the room. And they would tell me if I had attained it or if it needed to be shifted or changed at all. I found that just fabulous. That this gentleman understood math frequency and energy so specifically that he could create symbols and etch them, carve them into the stone walls, that once these symbols were placed, would hold a certain frequency in a room. And, you know, if you liken that to modern times as well, there's got to be a lot of that going on in our current world in terms of holding um, a dissonant frequency, a lower frequency than we would normally be attuned to. So holding us in a frequency that suppresses our natural frequency rather than enhancing it. This is why I love this session because I think there's a lot of um, wisdom and knowledge and comparisons that can be made from this session and our current times. So he continues, once it was finalized, then the symbols would be carved and then the symbol would become that. If you miscarved, if the carvings weren't correct, 
you could not fix it. So it was all precision work. It was so exact, it would tune the room and it would tune the people that walked into that room. It was my job to tune the rooms. What a job! Oh my goodness. I just find that so exciting. The idea of being able to tune a space so you could tune it to um, a specific high frequency. So say your meditation room in your house, you could tune that to a really high frequency. And then every time you walked into that meditation room, you'd be able to connect and go within really easily because high frequency was anchored in the space. So I personally find this fascinating. In that journey of becoming that person that would be called upon to tune those rooms, tell me more about how that journey unfolded for you. How did you become that person. I see myself as a child in the country close to a city. I was very happy and carefree, but there was something that I was doing the way that I could hear. I could pick up sound in a way that was different. I was gifted, so they took me to the city to learn. Tell me the kinds of things that you would learn. Pitch. But it wasn't just pitch in the ears. It was pitch. I can see myself sitting in a room as a young boy. I'm 13 or 14. I see myself sitting in that room and they are bouncing. Someone would play an instrument in my ears and I would have to know the trajectory of that sound. So I would be blindfolded. Sometimes I would have my eyes open. And I would have to pick up not just from where the sound came from, but also where it went to, where it bounced off the wall. So some of it was sound, but some of this was done with my third eye. It's kind of like the same thing as where if you know you close your eyes and you hold your hand up in front of your third eye and you can still see your hand in front of it. You can still see your hand if you're looking through your third eye, even though your eyes are closed. It's like that, but much further than your hand. So you would put the math of the symbol and it too would have a bounce, a, traje a trajectory which would interconnect, but you had to hear it. You would use sound to hear it, but you would also use the third eye, vibration. There was a lot of my time spent learning how to do this because once you learned, you could hear the bounce and see the frequency with your third eye. That's when the study came in with the math. Like, the number 258 wasn't just three numbers put together like we do here. The number 258 would be a very precise frequency. And you might place that to meet a 509 frequency. And when these two frequencies are blended across a room together, that would make another trajectory of frequency until you could bind the room in the frequency that you were trying to create. Then once you learnt that, the numbers and the frequencies of the numbers, some rooms were just done. They needed a certain kind of room for a certain kind of thing. Say it was a room that a student would live in and the student was studying a certain type of thing. You would place the symbol, the frequency in that room that would help them to study that certain type of thing. Once it was done, that symbol and that room could be repeated. We could do that room many times over. But as soon as the art that the student was learning changed, 
or if they had a bit of a different frequency within them that needed to be brought into the math of that room, it would be altered to facilitate their growth. Or, in some cases, to stifle their growth or to keep their growth in a certain arena, to block other aspects of themselves. Let's say, for example, they were good at playing a lute. This is when you've always know that you've connected to something pretty special because that wouldn't be the first uh, instrument that, that any of us in this time period would think of, would it? <laughs> Just going off to play my lute. So you know that you've connected to something pretty incredible. Let's say they were good at playing a lute, but they were also good at some other endeavor. The frequency of the lute would be in the math of that room. And the frequency of the other thing that they wanted to get involved in would be blocked in that room. Say I like to carve and I like to play the lute. But the only thing that was required of me, that was wanted of me, was that I played the lute, that lute playing part of me. The lute playing symbol, the math, would be placed in the room. But in the math, the carving side of me would be blocked in the symbolism. And the lute playing part of me would be enhanced, very specific. If somebody had genius capability, then they would want those other resonating sounds that might distract them from concentrating on the genius within them. They would want those other resonating sounds to be blocked. So it would enhance the genius. So our gifts have a frequency, they have a math, a number, they have symbols. Now that to me is just completely incredible because that is an enhanced civilization. That's where we can only hope to get to in the tentative steps and arenas that we are in currently. This civilization understood frequency, maths, and symbology to a place where they could tune rooms to bring and enhance a frequency or to block it. Now, what's interesting about this is this particular individual in this life told me after this session that they had a real problem with numbers a type of dyslexia in regards to numbers in this lifetime. And I found that very, very interesting because part of this lifetime is using numbers to suppress people's gifts. Not all of it, much of it was to enhance people's gifts. But karmically, there always has to be a redress, a balance of energy throughout the lifetimes in order that learning is achieved. So I found that very interesting that in this lifetime that she is in now, she had no level of competency whatsoever. It's like numbers were blocked from her, almost like that gift of hers, which was a superpower, had been suppressed. Isn't that interesting from a karmic perspective? So then I say, tell me more about how the math that is used corresponds to the symbols. There was quite a long pause here and she was seeing lots of things and she was trying to interpret and vocalize to me what she was seeing. Number four keeps coming up. A four can be a square. So there could be structure within the number. Then there might be a one, which would be a circle. So I could put a bunch of circles in a square and that person's vibration, or say for example, if the room, if the room's vibration needed the 41, four and one, I would use this symbol. So if I was to put the circle within the square, the 41, I then now have to factor in 
that there would now be a bunch of triangles created around the outer points within the square because that square, that circle, would not fit into the square. By placing the circle in the square, it creates four triangles. So there would now be four other points. These points are triangular. And the, triang the triangles are a three. So then inside of that symbol, you would have a four, a one, and four threes. But if that slight circle touched the edge of the square but didn't fill in the square, and those triangles had a slightly rounded edge to them, you might then have to make that corner three solid lines. Three straight lines instead of one curved line would then create a new parsect, and that would make eight more in just the symbol of a circle in a square. And each individual symbol has a frequency and each one of those curves and lines and in the way they curve would become a symbol. You would start to know that the circle with the triangle in the corner had its own symbol so you could write it. And I could write a formula on a parchment about how to create a frequency so it can be used by my survivors. You can imagine me, I'm sat there trying to follow what it is that she's saying there. I'm trying to visualize this square and a circle and triangles that have then got parsecs and my head nearly exploded. <laughs> because maths is not my gift, uh, far from it. In these rooms that you create with a frequency, what is the most popular frequency that you are asked to create within a room? There are many. There are some that I didn't like. I didn't like doing them as they were very limiting. The ones that I enjoyed were where people gathered, where you wanted laughter and joy, maybe singing, art, or theater, or the ones, the pillars that were in the garden. Those are the ones I liked doing. I did so many. Tell me about the ones that you did enjoy and how it felt to be in those rooms being bathed by the frequencies. So I ask her to talk to me about the ones that she enjoys, but she doesn't. She talks to me about the ones I think that she feels a little bit guilty about. And this is the whole point of this session for her. It's karmically making her understand, I feel, why numbers have never made sense to her in this lifetime, where she she can't access... Um, the ability to make sense of them and it's because in this lifetime she has karmically had to experience the suppression of her superpower of her gift she obviously has a gift with numbers and math but because she suppressed the gifts of others in this lifetime she now has to experience the same thing so she goes on to say a prison cell same as a cell that we have today but still a cell. It was to stop. It was to hold back, to rule a person. You had a slave, a slave room. This would have a certain frequency. And it felt, this frequency felt like their freedom had been taken away. They were the rooms that I did not like doing. It felt like this is a frequency that should not be. It didn't feel right. It felt like in today's world, how you would imagine an insane asylum and you wrap the people in there in a white coat and they can't move and they have to sleep in it. That's what it felt like to be in there every day in one of those rooms. Very confining. I liked it when it enhanced and even when it cut off a little part of someone's frequency so that they could still expand. They were my favourite rooms. Another part of their gift would feel good too. But when it held somebody in frequency that wasn't theirs, that did not feel good. So what we learn here is in this place, in this time, whether this is on earth, whether this is somewhere else, that they would still have slaves and they would keep those slaves under control by 
chiseling frequencies on a room that would suppress that person's natural frequency that would take their power away. So that's why I asked this next question. Tell me why it was necessary for people's frequencies to be controlled in this way. Why was this happening? Some of it was corrupted. It's like ley lines. This is part of where this comes from. Certain frequencies or energies in the earth itself that we want to be in as it brings out the best in us. You can be in some areas of the earth where it didn't feel that good. So I think she's trying to say um, just as earth herself has become corrupted in certain areas, the beings had also become corrupted in certain areas and they would use the math uh, for the purposes of, of suppressing people as opposed to enhancing people. And that's what we see now, isn't it? That's what happens in today's society. We, I think we're just witnessing with this session an advanced society, but that potentially has not advanced in the heart energies. And that's important, isn't it? Because all societies that we see advance, um, unless they advance with heart energy as well, they won't evolve. They will crash and fall. So she says it wasn't always about control. It was about understanding the math and it was dependent upon who controlled who, who had the prestige and how they used it. Like they, they were some, there were some that would use it for good and some that used it to control. So again, this is the knowledge. Some people use the knowledge to suppress and control and some used it for good. It's like the deep bass, hard music of today with a certain beat. It's the same thing. It's what they use to control the people nowadays. The music that we listen to controls us in frequency. But there was way more known about it here than there is known about it today. And isn't that interesting just to, to think about that? I really struggle to listen to any kind of modern music. And it's such a shame because I love the tunes of many of, um, you know, the more popular songs. Um, I can't listen to any pop artists without feeling sick uh, and without starting to receive images in my third eye and in my mind, which are not of a high frequency whatsoever. So I can't put myself in a space where I'm watching that stuff, where I'm listening to that stuff. My husband really likes dance music. It's his era, it's his thing. And I feel so sorry for him because I've just had to say to him, I'm so sorry, but please do not play that when I'm in the house. I can't listen to it. It makes me feel physically ill. Um, and so it must be the frequency of that music that begins to suppress or control or squish what you are. And I think that's what this uh, world, if you like, that we've, we're we getting a glimpse of in this session. I think that's what they understood that the masses do not understand in this world. The ones at the top understand it. That's why they're creating this music. But those secret knowledges have not been passed down to us. So that's why we must shine a light on it now and we must um, spread awareness in regards to frequency and vibration and how that affects us and how it has a bearing on us as people and us being able to step into the fullness of the frequency that we are. So then I asked the question, tell me more about the people in these times and how they lived and the ways in which it was different from today. Everything was built of stone and wood. Pillars were carved, lots of white substone, lots of stone carved. Carving was done with frequency and mind. It wasn't just pretty. There was no poverty. There were those who farmed everybody was healthy. It was not necessarily wealth. 
in that time it was prestige and power. The ones that had prestige, they had power over others. There was a lot of time spent learning and teaching. Again, gifts were seen. And once you had a child, you would look at them and you would find the gift. And then once you thought you'd found the gift, you would have other people come and look at the child to also find the gift and to agree that the gift was there. And then those gifts would be brought out in the child or enhanced. So there was a lot about growth and bettering. And it crossed my mind as I was transcribing this last night, wouldn't that be amazing if that's how our society worked nowadays? If we didn't just try and mold all children, you know, like how our society does, they mold all of the children into the, try and mold them into the same being. We've all got to learn the same things. We've all got to learn this curriculum. We've all got to move along together. If you're, you know, different from other people, then you're lower down, you know, you're not as intelligent or you're not as this. It's not the way it should be. Everybody's different. Everybody's got unique gifts and abilities. And we should be looking at our children and seeing the gift and enhancing that gift within our children because that will be their superpower instead of trying to make them, you know, tick all of the boxes. And that again, in my opinion, is what's wrong with our society nowadays. He continues, as a result of this, people were relatively happy, except those who did want to control, and then they would try and stifle. And because the frequency was anchored in a room, a person wouldn't necessarily know that their frequency had been changed. And they would just adapt to the frequency. I would know, but they wouldn't necessarily know. And it would hurt my heart. And it would hurt theirs, as they wouldn't know either. So that also got me thinking about today's society. And that's essentially what's occurring, isn't it? That anchoring a frequency on this planet that alters our natural organic frequency. And in so doing, they are disabling us from stepping into our power. The only way you can maintain a good high frequency in this world is to step outside of it, is to no longer li listen to the news, to lo no longer partake in reading the newspapers, to no longer listen to what they're telling us uh, is the truth in society. You have to step out of it. You have to sidestep it. You have to dance to your own tune, your own frequency, your own beat. And you find that beat within, inside of you. Because if you connect within, you connect to source. And source is the organic resonance, the organic tune, the organic beat, not the inorganic frequency that they're trying to anchor in this realm. So then I ask you, talk about the children who would be watched to ascertain the gifts that they had. And you have this incredible gift to be able to feel and to see the frequency in the math and to be able to create spaces using symbols that hold that frequency. Tell me more about the other gifts that were observable in the children at this time, because I found that very interesting. This person obviously has a gift with maths and energy and sound and frequency, which is wonderful. But what other things were um, accessible in, in this time. And so she says, the gifts went with the senses. So take, for example, 3D mechanisms. People that could think in 3D. Everybody needed one of those people. Someone who could make 3D mechanisms. They were popular. <laughs> Oh my God, that really tickled me. I thought that was fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. That's kind of what we're living in now, isn't it? A world of people that can see 3D mechanisms. 
they were popular. A novelty. A person that had a gift for plant care. Again, there were those that were gifted with the ability to understand the vibrational frequency of a plant for food. So crops and the land and how the land would be used and their ability to understand. They would take a seed and they would find the perfect place for that seed to grow. They would know the frequency of the seed and the frequencies, frequencies of the earth around them. And they would choose the exact right place for that seed to be planted. Again, a crop would grow much more abundantly using the ley line frequencies. Someone with that gift lives outside of the city and lives a rich and ful fulfilled life, giving and doing what comes so readily to them. I had someone in my family who had that gift and I watched how that gift developed in them. And I was always fascinated by how precise the planting of a seed could be. If I plant it here, I remember it was a she, my family member. She said, if I plant it here, one here and one here, and I'm going to tell you that this one is going to grow twice as high as this one. And the seeds would be placed only five inches apart. But she could feel the energy of the seed, and the energy of the earth. And she knew exactly where the seed needed, needed to be placed. A lot of our life was about energy. So much of it was about energy. Now, at this point, this lady had uh, two cats and I always have a rule about cats. They're not allowed in the uh, session room where I'm doing this because cats love high frequency energy. And as soon as high frequency energy is anchored in a place, cats are always going to come in and get involved. And this uh, this lady said, assured me that there is no way that uh, either of her cats would come anywhere near her that they were house cats, but they had never uh, come anywhere near her personally and they wouldn't sit on her. So one cat was left in the room and the other cat was upstairs, but with the room door open. And it was at this point when she started to begin talking about energy that a cat appeared from nowhere and jumped on her chest and began purring. And he started to try and touch her neck and a face because he wanted that energy that she was accessing. And this lifted her up a little bit at this point. So unfortunately at that point, um, I had to move her rather quickly to the death scene and then we connected with her higher self. Um, I would have loved to have stayed in that lifetime for a lot longer to find, to find out more about that civilization and um, what they knew about energy and frequency. I'm really hoping that I'm going to be able to work with that lady again in the future. Um, but that was a fabulous session. And it gave me a lot to think about in terms of energy, frequency, vibration, and the effect that symbology and math and music and tonality can have on our personal frequency. Think of yourself as a tuning fork if you are a tuning fork that is tuned to a certain resonance, but you're constantly in a room that's got a low frequency tone playing, it's going to lower the frequency of your tuning fork. So all of us need to be very mindful of that, what we're listening to, what we are connecting to. Um, it's important. So I've got a few things to mention to everybody that's still listening to me at this point. Um I watched, I rewatched the film, The Celestine Prophecy this week. I watched it a few years ago, the first time. And I remember I enjoyed it. Um, but something called me to watch it again. And so I watched, I watched it again this week. And it's an absolutely fabulous film. If you haven't already watched it, please do watch it. You can also buy the book. It's based on a book. And actually, there are four books in this series. And um, the additional books 
this first book is all about basically New Earth, what Ascension is. And it explains it pretty well in the Celestine Prophecy. The New Earth is not a different place. It's not somebody picking us up on a spaceship and taking us to a new place. That's not something that um, I would recommend anybody does. It's not, um, you know, it's, it's not a place that we've got to try and get to. The New Earth is a frequency in this place at this time. The New Earth is a frequency that we tune into when we are ready as a collective. And the most beautiful thing is the New Earth frequency is New Earth to us. It's not New Earth to her. It's who she is and has been this entire time. We are tuning in or retuning back in to the higher frequency, the resonance that we used to vibrate at eons ago before the fallen consciousness, before we started developing into these civilizations that then uh, began to become more obsessed with the mind and what we can create, what we can achieve, what we can do. This called in darker energy when we started to experiment. And then that's when the frequency and the energy of humanity fell. The new earth is a resonance. And it's an understanding, it's a consciousness evolution of humans for all of us to understand that we need to stop taking energy from each other. So you need to remove your entities, you need to bring your energy fully back into your energy centers, connecting to the planet, connecting to her, in the resonance of her. That will then affect your consciousness. You will then start to see the world as it really is. Then we vibrate higher. We come together in groups of people that all feel and act in the same way. And then there is a collective shift. It's a retuning of frequency and resonance. You're tuning out of the radio station that we've currently been tuned into for the past God knows how many years that's playing uh, heavy metal. Sorry for all of the heavy metal fans out there. Just using it as a, an example. And we're changing the station to the station that is playing the, the classical music or the music of high resonance, the music that is uh, heavenly. And that dial comes within you. You have to retune back in to what has always been there. It's you and all of us as humans that have come out of balance. Our frequencies have been artificial, artificially held in a dis, dissonant resonance. And that's why this session was shared today, because I wanted to anchor this learning point at the end of it. We need to step out of that artificially held room where they've placed all of the symbols around that room that holds our frequency in a low space that keeps us as slaves, that keeps our gifts suppressed. The first step is knowing that the room is there and that you are in it. And then once you realize that, you need to step out of the room. You need to switch off from what it is that they're saying, what they're telling you. You need to stop eating their foods. You need to stop drinking the water that they want you to drink. You need to stop listening to the things that they want you to listen to. You need to listen to yourself. You need to heal your traumas. You need to vibrate higher. You need to bring color back into your life. You are in your natural state when you're plugged into the earth. Actually, white light throughout. But it starts off with the colors of the rainbow being returned into your body throughout your energy centers and when those energy centers become strong very strong and used to working together as a team they will eventually work together and they will be white light throughout we need to step out of that dissonant frequency that they have held us in the controllers who controlled the rooms and we need to step into the fullness of our own natural frequencies. 
And the moment that you do that and you see the world as it really is outside of their sick society, connect with the earth as she really is. That is when you will find your new earth frequency. And when we do all of that collectively together, if you're in tune with that, when the big wave of energy arrives, because everything that happens on the micro happens on the macro. Everything that happens within you, the change within you is reflected on a much bigger level outside of you. When we have achieved that level of peace and connection within us, the heavens will align. All of the celestial events that have been in place for a long time will come to be. And then at that point, that is when we will physically see with our own eyes that new earth frequency held. That's when the people will disappear. Because the only way you access that higher frequency is to resonate with it. That's why people will report that they don't see us anymore. And I don't know yet how that will work if our physical bodies will actually die in that old reality and we move into that um, light body. And that's the body, the avatar that we use in that higher realm. I actually think I do believe that that's what occurs. Some people believe that these bodies, these meat suits are going to change into the avatar that you will use in that realm. I don't know how that can happen, given the fact that this blood and bones avatar is the third dimensional avatar. In the fifth dimension, you are light. So for me, I think I resonate more with the idea that your light body is the representation of your soul. And that is what you access when you move into that higher frequency of resonance. But it doesn't matter what resonates for you. It doesn't matter. All that matters at this point is that you work on your own frequency. You've got to achieve emotional mastery. You've got to stop being so angry and volatile and uh, a great place to start in regards to explaining that is the Celestine Prophecy. Check it out if you haven't already um, taken a look at it. I want to give an acquaintance of mine uh, a shout out today uh, who has just released a new children's book. So this is my acquaintance, Morgan Silas Donnelly, and he has written the book, Sammy the Gnat Gets a New Raincoat. If it's sunny out, why do I need one? Uh, I read this book myself, thoroughly enjoyed it. Read it before I read it to the kids. <laughs> uh, then I remembered I had kids and they also needed to read it too. Um, so I read it to them. They absolutely loved it. And um, it's changed their opinion on gnats. Because prior to this book, uh, gnats were generally not liked in our family particularly fungus gnats uh, that hang around plants. But since Sammy has been born, who is a really nice gnat, my kids are totally into them and they don't want to kill them anymore. They want to talk to them. So well done, Morgan, for uh, shining a light on gnats. <laughs> so if you want to get your child a new book, um, that's different to all of the mainstream stuff that they want our children reading. Support this gentleman. Um, uh, I've always felt really passionately about helping people that step outside of the the norm, if you like, and the the institutions. For everybody that's been interested on coming on the entity release class for parents. It is released. I am booking people on. 
the classes are filling up nicely. I will be capping it at 50. I haven't got to 50 yet. There are still places available. So if you did want to come on those classes that will teach you how to clean and clear yourself energetically and then your children, then this is the class for you. Uh, you get a 200 page manual. You'll get to spend two live days with me and you will also get access to a pre-recorded course that talks you through everything that you can then look at after you've spent the live days with me to fill in any gaps in your learning. You will also get training tools that you will be given that you can use to help your child understand these concepts and you will be given access to my Mighty Networks platform where you can contact me, message me on a daily basis for any help uh, and queries that you may need as you learn the technique. Um, if you've been thinking about training with me for quite a long time, I currently right now have the online practitioner training for soul center healing hypnosis practitioners available at www.schhofficial.com. However, I am currently in the process of organizing my first ever live course in the UK, live in person. So you will get to spend five days with me learning all of this stuff in real life. So we'll actually get to meet and chat in real life. And after the course ends, um, I will be staying in the hotel as well at night time. So it will be the ideal opportunity uh, for us to meet and for you to grill me on all of the questions that you've always wanted to ask. Um, and I'm really, really hoping that I'm going to get quite a lot of people that come to this course. The dates that I'm tentatively looking at or the 5th to the 9th of August this year. The reason I want that week is because on the Thursday of that week is the 888. So it will be the 8th day of the 8th month, 2024. So it's 888, which is abundance. And that number is very important to me. So that's why I do want it to be that week if possible. So I'm going to try and get that week. Um, so if you have wanted to train with me for a long time, but the online training didn't really excite you, you wanted to meet me in real life and have the real life one-on-one. -on -one. It's not going to be one-on-one -on -one because I will be in front of a group of people, but you know there will be periods of time where it will be one-on-one. -on -one. Um, then this is the course for you. I will also be demonstrating live hypnotherapy on that course as well. So you will get to see me in real life in action. Uh, hypnotizing people, removing entities and taking people on really, really high frequency journeys like the one that you've just listened to today. So if you are interested in that live course, please do drop me a message on the YouTube. On the YouTube, please do uh, reach out and let me know so I can get an idea of numbers because at the moment it's looking like there's two sizes of room. I can either book one that's 180 people, classroom style, or I can book one that's 40. So obviously I don't want to book the 180 classroom style one if there's going to be four people. Although we'll have lots of space to do yoga and star jumps and whatnot. Um, it might be a little bit lonely if there's just the four of us rattling around in that big room. So I need to kind of get an idea of numbers. So if you are interested uh, in coming to the UK, if you don't already live in the UK for that week, meeting me and training with me, then please do let me know. I'm going to be organizing a practitioner uh, day on the final day. So on the final day of that week, all of the practitioners that are already trained um, that want to come to that day, I will be putting some sort of a practitioner day on that day where we can do some team building, where we can get to know each other in all of the different countries in a better way. And then at the night time on the Friday night, I'm going to organize some kind of social event where we can all get together, have some fun, maybe do a bit of karaoke. No, not for karaoke. OK, um, but I'll organize something 
that's good fun where we can all get together and get to know each other a little bit better. If you're one of the people that's followed me for a good long time, um, I've never done anything like this before. I've never done anything that's a an event live in person. And I'm hoping that this is going to spread to even bigger events. Um, but at the moment, the only country that I'm allowed to do this in is the UK. So if you want to come and meet me and if you want to train with me personally, then you will need to to come on this course in the UK. I'm going to leave you with that for today. Check out the Celestine Pro Prophecy this week. Um, if you've got children that you want to understand energy and the new earth in a better way, um, that film is a PG. Both of my children have watched it and they totally got it. They understood it. They really enjoyed it. So um, there isn't really anything in it that's inappropriate. There are a few men with guns. Um, that's probably the worst thing that happens in it. There's a few men with guns, but there's no swearing. It's a really uh, spiritual film. Until the next time that I see you guys, make sure that you keep vibrating high. I have already started transcribing my next session that I will be releasing. So there will be another vlog coming soon. So stay tuned for that. Till the next time I see you guys, make sure that you keep vibrating high. Lots of love. Bye bye.